Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time we made a shocking revelation. <laughs> to demonstrate that shocking revelation from last time, I'm going to be heading over to Tostarina's Stone Tower. And I'm going to get accidentally hit by these little tiny Goombas because that's how video games go sometimes. Uh, the stairs up. Say this here, pipe? <laughs> ah. We can, in fact. Uh, the timing is tricky, but. Yes, we can in fact enter these areas. And takes a bunch of damage by accident, meaning we're about to die. Uh, can you use Amiibos in 2D sections? Hi. Heck yeah. <laughs> Which means we can get these purple coins that I thought we couldn't get. And also means we actually have that moon. Which we got last time. So we can just warp up to the stone tower. Oh my goodness. Also, there's an 8-bit sprite of a life up part. I don't think there's anywhere any other way to get one in the game, but there you go. Uh, this part, basically, you just want to ride this moving platform. You can throw Cappy over there to get some extra coins and stuff, but none of that is required. Uh, and I might... I'll actually hang on to some purple coins over there, which I would like. See if I can get him. Uh, basically, I want to throw Cappy at that hat launcher. Hopefully, without missing. Oh god. <laughs> uh, oh my god. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> to be fair, I probably should have gotten rid of that life up part anyway. Pretty much just did it so I didn't have to get into the 2D section again. Because the timing is really tricky. It takes a couple tries. But it's doable. And not nearly as impossible as I anticipated. Basically, as soon as Mario arrives, there's like a couple of frames where you can jump. And if you jump, you won't go down the pipe, even though you're trying to crouch. Because you're not touching the pipe anymore. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, what I'm trying to do is throw Cappy at that little hat launcher to activate the explodey thingy, because the explodey thingy will blow up the little um, rocks on that second moving platform there, which makes it more straightforward to collect the purple coins. Um, although, considering how much difficulty I'm having doing any of that, it might be easier just to make my way over there and get the purple coins sort of like this. There we go, I'm gonna die, but purple coins stay collected, so that's okay. <laughs> anyway, what we're doing in this video is making our way through the other story moons of Tost Arena, which I did not expect to be a thing we could do when I started this run, because I was convinced you could not make it up this tower. Um, you can in fact make it up the outside of the tower as well, but the, the skip to do that is even harder than the technique necessary to enter a 2D section. So, not something I'm a fan of, let's say. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, let's just get back on the platform for the moment. Um, basically, yeah, you just keep riding this all the way. You can skip most of the platforms here because of all these rocks and stuff. You want to get over here faster if you want. This is the Moai habitat, it's the second story moon. This is also what introduces the Moais if you're playing normally instead of doing stuff in weird orders like I was. Uh, we've already seen them in this kingdom, in fact. What they do is you capture them and you can see invisible stuff by putting on their sunglasses, like that. So you can see you can reach those purple coins without falling into poison, for example. You can also get this moon shard here by throwing Cappy, there we go. Moon shards can be looked at with Cappy, even though actual moons can't. I'm not really sure why it works that way. The fact that the birds are landing on this invisible platform is also a bit of a hint that it's there. 
which is kind of cute. Uh, we can get these purples without any, without any hassle whatsoever. Oops. We can then accidentally roll off the platform and die, but that's not even a problem at all. We lose a couple coins, but we don't lose any moon shards. For some reason, moon shards are saved at checkpoints, unlike some of the other things that are in this game. I don't know. Um, I'm avoiding using the Moais, basically because they don't crouch. Um, this area is completely doable without a Moai. They're just there to help you see the invisible platforms. But you don't actually need to see the invisible platforms to walk on the invisible platforms. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, you just have to get the five moon shards here. I think this is the only moon shard one that's, like, absolutely required. I mean, none of them are required, obviously, but, like, this one's part of the story. Oh, no, the one in Shavaria is as well, but it's not called moon shards. It's, like, one of the seals. Seal moons has some shards for no reason, basically. Um, let me see here. I think I can go that way. Oop. I was trying to throw Cappy down so that she'd, you know, scout out the area for me, but instead I just rolled. See, the, the control to throw Cappy downward when using a Procon is the same controls as the controls to do a rolling ground pound thing. Um, basically a, a high speed ground pound is, is what I would call it, I guess. Uh, the last moon judge is over there, so I can just... Do a little cap pounce, there we go. Uh, there's some bows that footprints there. If you get here when you're supposed to, Kathy actually has a comment about that, but because we finished the whole game, she doesn't have much to say. Uh, there's the moon. And that means we can access the next 2D section. <laughs> Are you excited? Because I'm excited. The next 2D section is, of course, the inverted pyramid. Which is the first area in the game where you get to swap up for down, as mentioned in Break Free. Ba -da, ba -da -da. I think there's some more later on, but this is the first one, and we weren't able to reach it, but now we are. Thanks to the brand new getting into 2D areas tech we've discovered. <laughs> so, showdown on the inverted pyramid. Basically, you want to climb the pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, you fight a brutal... I think it's Harriet, which is annoying because, as you may recall from our visit to Bowsette's Kingdom, Harriet is really hard in this, in this playthrough. Uh, you can reach the pyramid already, like, from the very beginning of the kingdom, but the door is closed. I believe there's a way to clip inside that some speedrunners use in order to skip the first two story moons. But I don't know how to do that, and... I have a suspicion it won't work on 1.2 because a lot of clips and stuff were patched that worked in the original 1.0 version of the game. Uh, anyway, so this is the inverted pyramid. It's a pyramid, but it's upside down. Or some might say inverted. So yeah, most of it's a 2D section, as you can see. What you've got to do, basically, you can capture that bullet if you want. You also can non not capture that bullet if you want. I'm going to not capture the bullet. Because these little platform thingies are positioned in such a way that you can, in fact, bounce your way over without using a bullet. Obviously, that's something Nintendo had in mind. Uh, this 2D section we can easily enter because this pipe is sideways. Which is interesting because, you know, most of the 2D seconds in the game aren't that like that. Uh, there's a couple of coins up there we can get if we want them. I think we probably want them. Uh, if you use small hops here, you won't go into the other section, which is good because otherwise we have some problems. <laughs> you could use very small hops though. Super gentle on the B button. Uh, and I might want another life up part, honestly. Just because these bullets are much harder to dodge with the restrictions we're under. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna... No! <laughs> I wasn't quick enough. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm gonna give myself another life up heart, just just to handle the bullets. Like, it's just, it's really just a time saver that I'm using an Amiibo to do it. I could go and buy one, but that's just gonna take longer and make the video longer for no reason, basically. There is actually a free life up heart near the end of this area as well, so I might be getting that. Let's see how we go. I think you need to use a bullet bill to get it. Alright, so this 2D section, 
you think you just go this way, you can't actually jump that high though. So you are required to go back this way and into this upside down section. There. You gotta tap the button very, very gently because Mario's jump high is determined by how long you press the button. Like in the real 2D games. There we go. Now this part's a little scary. Uh, you might want to tank a hit, maybe? No, that's totally doable. Alright. Uh, there. Okay, falling down into the like non-upside-down section there will kill you, so don't do that. Here, there's another pipe which I believe... Yeah, it's one of these pipes. Um, thankfully, it's a lot easier to jump out in this case because of the scene transition. The timing isn't nearly as hard as the ones in areas. I think it might be that these pipes actually like disable themselves for a second when you come through, just to avoid loading the area again. That's what I would do if I designed this game. Uh, we want to actually get past this pipe if we can. Oops. Uh... Okay, yeah, there's actually quite a bit of time after coming through these pipes before they reactivate, which makes that pretty easy. Yeah, we want to go past it because if we go over here, there is another hidden moon to, ga to gather, which I also thought we'd have no hope of getting. Yeah! I mean, actually, I did think we could probably get this one if we could get to the pyramid, because this 2D section is, like, it doesn't have the same issues the other one did with pipes. It does have these vertical pipes, but they're always positioned in such a way that we can make our way past them without too much hassle. Uh, here, if you jump on top of the bullet bill, you can find these hidden blocks for climbing up here to get a couple purple coins, which otherwise we would have not been able to get. Uh, here, you're supposed to get a bullet bill and use it to get over this wall by breaking the blocks, but you don't actually have to do that. You can actually just climb up above the wall as Mario, so I'm going to try to do that. Uh, the thing is, if you get onto the slope, you have trouble because it gets really slippery. And you just slide down like that. So you have to basically do it a little bit further away. Ooh. Okay, yeah, let's just head this way. Um, the life up part is hidden here inside this block, so you basically just have to lure a bullet bill from the 2D section. I really like that bit, where they just come out of the 2D into 3D and then they bullet at you. Yeah, you just gotta break this block with the bullet and you get a heart. There we go. Uh, then you have this section. This can be jumped just as Mario. I tend to have trouble, but I'm gonna give it a shot. See, I just didn't make it. I think if I'd been rolling a bit faster, I would have done the, made it. Although the long jump actually does cancel your momentum, so maybe not. Oh, that's annoying. So when you respawn, you respawn on the pipe and it's already active, so you instantly go down it. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's not like a problem or anything, because I can just do that and then be fine, but... So what you, have to, what you actually have to do here, I think, is do the cap bounce and then a wall jump to get high enough. Also, yeah, you can get hit, so don't do that. Oh no, there we go, you do it like that. Easy peasy. I'm gonna laugh apart. Okay, so, yeah, this jump is possible just as Mario, but to avoid having to respawn too much, I might just grab a bullet and do it that way. Uh, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it with Mario. Let's do it with Mario. Change my mind. Okay, so... Wow, that was terrible. Uh, okay, okay. I'll, we'll use a bullet. So yeah, you immediately go down that pipe, because the pipe hasn't been deactivated by being gone through just yet. Whereas this one, you can see there's plenty of time to make a jump. Interesting. Yeah, the way pipes work while crouching is... is... very sneaky. <laughs> uh, okay, so what we want to do here... Yeah, yeah, you want to do a backflip, and then a wall jump, and then a dive over there. There we go. Uh, we'll get the life up hard again. We could get the one out of the, ami out of the amiibo instead. You can actually use those as many times as you want, whenever you want, which is a little silly. But since the game actually gives you one right here, may as well just get this one. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna use the bullet just to get over here, just because respawning so much is being a hassle. So, what you do, you capture a bullet. 
like that. Then you fly over here, and you accidentally steer this way. Whoops, what am I doing? Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's a secret room you can get to, just here. We have lots lots of coins in it by going through the little slot at the end of those moving columns, basically. And there's lots and lots and lots of coins in here. And also, a tasty power moon. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Oh my goodness. Then you go down this pipe. Which gets you back to here. I'm gonna catch a bullet again, just to do this without too much annoyance. Give me a bullet. These bullets don't even have hats, so they're really easy to capture. Yeah. So, yeah, with a bullet, you can just fly all the way over here. Without one, you can get across by doing, like, a really precise jump and bounce onto that middle part. And then from there, you can jump and bounce over to here. It's just a little... it's just tricky, is all. Uh, then here, there's a bunch of cacti. For some reason, indoors. I don't know. And then you can just head out onto the roof of the inverted pyramid. That's right, we made it. We're up here. Oh my goodness. So there's a power moon over here we can get. You can tell because that tail is sparkling. Cappy! <laughs> uh. ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! And I think that's the only one you can do right now. Uh, let me see, is the checkpoint up here already? Because I don't really want to have to go through the pyramid again to get back up here. It wasn't that hard, but it was kind of hard. Okay, purple coins. Making good progress on the purple coin front. I believe there's a bunch in the final story area, which we'll get to after we do this boss battle. Uh, yeah, it looks like the checkpoint's not up here yet, which is kind of weird. Because I don't remember having to come up, go through again to get to the checkpoint. Maybe you just automatically get it once you've done the fight or something. I don't know. Anyway, you go in here and you'll get a fight with Harriet. Now, this fight happens to be one of the few in the game that has dialogue that genders Cappy. Um, what happens is Harriet says, you guys, during the dialogue. But if you skip the fight and come back to it in the post game, like we're doing here, then she never actually says anything, because the brutal dialogue is skipped in that case. Which is very helpful for our situation, because this means it's also a misgenderingless run, just like my previous run, that I did next to film. <laughs> okay, this one, this Harriet fight is much easier than the one in Bowsette's Kingdom. She's only got like one bomb at a time instead of lots. It's still hard, because Harriet is still a hard boss when you can't throw Cappy on the ground. Um, she's actually pretty hard brutal, even in a normal playthrough, honestly. There we go. And she takes three bobs. Um, we're doing fine, though. Since we got that life up part, we're not, we're not really in any danger. I'd probably be being more careful about damage if I hadn't gotten the life up part, really. So, yeah, you just gotta... Bop, and that's all three hits. And that means we get straight under the inverted pyramid. We are making some real good progress, y'all. And when we get that moon, something exciting happens. Apart from the wonderful multi-moon song. I love this game. Okay, so this, the Shadow on the Inverted Pyramid causes a few different things to happen when we collect it. For one, when we get back to the Odyssey shortly, it will be night time. Yeah! And this is the only place you get to see Tostarina by night. And it looks gorgeous. Actually, you get to see it during the uh, free running as well. So, two places. And that unlocks this passage underneath where the Inverted Pyramid was, because now the pyramid is floating for no reason. <laughs> anyway, Toss Arena by Night is where we are now. Uh, everything here is pretty much the same. It's still very cold. Uh, I think if you talk to these people, they'll say it's gotten colder. Okay, yeah, we need to, we need to ride a Jaxi because these, like, 
these um zombie mummy things will attack you if you go out of town. Uh, so yeah, we have to head over to the inverted pyramid again and basically jump in the hole that's been created in order to do the last story in here. So we're gonna just pop on the Jaxi here. See these little these mummies here, you can't throw Cappy at them. Well I mean you can, but it won't defeat them. Um it just like stuns them for a second. You have to jump on them. And jumping on them doesn't actually bounce you either, so it's very easy if there's like a swarm of them to get ganked by it by them basically. So you gotta watch out for that. Um Anyway, what we have to do is go down this hole basically. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, apparently the Jaxi isn't affected by the slope, which is interesting. Usually I just walk down there as Mario, and when you get onto like a slightly slopey bit, he just gets all sloped. <laughs> so you can see the sand falling down in this little spot, it's pretty cool. So this is the underground temple. This is where you're supposed to start capturing Goombas for the first time, I think. So there's a Goomba over there. One of the things about Goombas is that their little feet don't slip on this ice the way Mario's feet do. I mean, they're big feet, I guess. That's probably why, because they have these gigantic feet. So you can just walk around on the ice without any problems. And Cappy tells you that, actually, as you can see. Uh, so that makes, like, traversing here much easier if you use a Goomba rather than just do it on foot. Uh, let's see, can you... Yes, you can. And in fact, the developers expected you to get up here. Uh, I guess some purple coins over here. <laughs> yes, Mario slips a lot on ice in this game. Um, compared to, say, a Goomba, who doesn't slip at all. Um, so if there's a moon there we can get. To do that, you basically just have to stack up a whole bunch of Goombas at, at once. Uh, it's not too tricky. You basically don't want to use these hat throwers, because all that will do... Get you a couple of coins, but it'll also activate those explodey things which will defeat all the Goombas and then you'll have problems because you won't be able to build a Goomba Tower, which we need. We do need quite a tall Goomba Tower, and as, as it happens, we need to get every Goomba we can. And just stack them all up together, like this. Because the moon over there can only be reached by a very tall Goomba Tower. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Or possibly by a Mario doing like a really, really ridiculous jump. Anyway, this part is very easy. Uh, these little moving platforms are icy, so you basically want to stay in your Goomba Tower to do this bit. It's also the easiest way to reach these four purple coins. So once you've done that, you can ditch the Goomba Tower and go without for the next bit. So... Yeah, we're nearly there. Nearly there. Oop. Yeah, just ditch it. There we go. So for this bit, as you can see, there is a bullet here. What we want to do is capture that bullet because there's like, like a huge pit over there. Rather than flying straight into the pit in front of us, we're going to fly over this way because there's a little tiny area hidden over here where a bunch of coins to reward us for our mastery of exploring places that it doesn't really make sense to explore, <laughs> and a tiny, tiny ledge to freak out about falling off of. You can climb up here using whoops, whoops, oh no, oh no, I think there might have been a checkpoint at the beginning of the bullet build part, maybe not, I forget if there are checkpoints here, there are. Yeah, so it's like a galaxy-style invisible checkpoint, basically. Uh, so yeah, we want to go back up there again, which we'll be doing in just a moment, once we manage to lure this bullet. Okay, maybe the next bullet. The bullets, yeah, they explode on their own after a little while. I think the timer does reset when you capture the bullet, though, so... Oops. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um... I'm having a bit of trouble here. Um, just gonna... Thanks, princess. The game doesn't pause when the amiibo thing is open, so it's a bit of a risk to use one, really, because you can get ganked, and you have to hold right on the D-pad, which means you can't really reach the left analog and move around. So that's kind of an interesting way of 
preventing you from just doing that all the time, I guess. Although you can just all just do it all the time, pretty much. Okay, so, yeah, what we want to do is just cross over this way. We might do it with some cap bounces and stuff like this instead of rolling, just so we keep a bit more control. And then, yeah, there's invisible blocks here, which you can climb onto to help you get up there. And there's a moon here. Yeah! Uh, and then when you're done there, you can just head on down this way. To access the final area. Deepest underground. Uh, this is where the binding band is supposed to be. It's not quite clear, but later on the binding band will be here and then I'll make it much clearer. Um, you can get up there, and there are coins up there. But I'm going to try to do it, because the way I usually do it involves a triple jump, and it's really fiddly. Uh, instead, I'm just going to head this way. Now, you might remember that there was like a, a multi-moon sticking out of the ceiling. Well, this is... It's that guy's hat, basically. The multi-moon is inside his hat. So what we have to do is fly over there with a bullet. Preferably without doing that. Uh, I believe the actual fight, it'd be much easier to do this. You have to do something similar to capturing bullet bills, but the um, thing you have to capture is much bigger. So it should not be quite as hard as this. Whoa, how did I survive that? Okay, yeah, you just fly over there using a bullet. And then you get to face off against that face. I forget his name. The game doesn't actually tell you. Um, I think it's like knuck Knuckle something. Anyway, he's convinced that we stole the ring, the binding band, which we didn't steal. Uh, Bowser stole it, and now we're here. And anyway, this guy has like ice powers, which is why Tostarina is so cold, basically. Uh, what you have to do is get him to punch one of the um, icy spots. Which I don't really have trouble with because I keep moving. Oops. Because that hurts his hand like that. And then you can put Cappy on that little gem on top of the hand. And it works just like a bullet bill. And you can punch him with his own hand. There we go. Um, as you can see, there are some hearts you can get. So I might be trying to get some of those. I'll just stay here. Bam! Here he takes three hits. This first version of the fight is pretty easy. Uh, there is a later version, which is much harder, basically because all of his moves will spawn dozens of those mummy zombie thingies from earlier. Um, which, of course, you can't really defeat very easily, and they just make the battlefield much harder to navigate than it otherwise would be. Oh, and that was a messy bit. There we go. Yeah, so you just gotta get him to hurt his hand, and then you can zoom in and whack him in the face. And we've just defeated, like, I don't know, we've killed the ancient guardian of this place just because of a case of mistaken identity, which I think is probably not good. I'm not sure Mario is necessarily the hero here, but at least we got that multi-move. And that is the last story moon. We've done Tostarina's story, which is something I was convinced we would not be able to do. It's daytime again. Most of the ice is thawed. There's still a little bit around, but for the most part the ice is thawed. And now if we head into Tostarina Town, there's music. We've saved Tostarina. Good for us. Also, here's that guy whose taxi was frozen earlier. You can see he's now here and he's talking to this guy. So, we'll be able to get some moons from them. 
Uh, I don't know if we get them here or here first or here later. There's definitely one here. <sighs> anyway, um, I think that's it for this video. As you can see, it, it is in fact possible to do the entirety of Tostarina's storyline while permanently crouched. Um, check the previous video if you're not sure how to do the first bit because, you know, I did that in the previous video. Oh my goodness. Uh, thank you so much for watching and for enjoying me getting some moons, I guess. Um, and for wearing a sombrero that completely covers my bod because I'm crouching. I still think this is just really funny. There we are. Sombrero with legs, the new Mario character. Sombrero with little tufts of smoke coming out of it. <laughs> I know they're fists, but it looks like little tufts of smoke. Also, also, this doggy's here now, so that's cute. The dog was inside, but now it's outside because, well, we saved Tostarina, it's not cold anymore, so the dog is allowed outside. Pretty cute. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Also, have a great day, and um, stare directly at the sun. Don't do that. You'll hurt your eyes. It's pretty, though. I wonder if the moon's still visible. I think it probably is, but I'm not sure where. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's the moon. Thanks for watching.